Hey, it is I, DJ, here for another video here at DJ's Destiny. We got the TWAB that just came out earlier this week, August 26, 2021. So yeah, I know it's been uh, two days, but I've been grinding the literal hell out of this brand new season, season of loss, which is pretty amazing so far. So I actually skimmed through the TWAB the first time, but I actually want to sit down and go through it and see what they're talking about, because I have the general gist of it, but I wanted to really look at you know what direction they're going with void 3.0 spoiler alert that's what the top's about void 3.0 and some of the other changes that they are making to the future really because witch queen just got announced this week and man i'm going crazy literally a great time so let's just jump right into it i'm gonna scroll down uh trial stuff we'll talk about trials later uh bungee foundation no get your emblem donate all that good stuff uh, into the void so we're gonna go straight into business so through Tuesday's reveal we watched as you reacted to the witch queen season of the lost and the 30th anniversary part of those reactions were on subject like subclasses and stasis aspects and fragments I feel before we move forward we should rip off a few bandages so there will be no darkness subclasses with witch queen or through year 5 we made a refo we made a call to refocus ourselves on the light subclass this year. As you see below, this doesn't just mean a port, but also new and exciting stuff. There's no new stasis aspects and fragments arriving along Season of the Lost. Similar to above, we wanted to focus on different initiatives instead of adding more stasis. We feel like the subclass build rarity is in a good spot and was likely to benefit from tuning changes more than new stuff. To that end, we prioritize the Season of the Lost balance patch and another patch you'll hear about debuting with the So yeah, uh, there's no new aspects. So Darkness, the Darkness subclass, Stasis, is going to be on a bit of a back burner for an entire year, which honestly, thank God, Stasis on Titan and Warlock has been a lot less problematic and you don't see it as often. But, you know, that, that Hunter Stasis, that, that's my biased opinion, uh, is still pretty strong. So, you know, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about um, there not being any focus on the darkness for a year and them focusing more on, you know, the light subclasses? Because me personally, I love the new change. So the new changes that they've already implemented, like, for example, the new Rally Barricade for Titans, super fun. Uh, Vex, Vex Sunspot Titan is kind of dumb. Honestly, you do a lot of damage for no reason. Uh, but definitely that the new changes that they made to to Arc on Warlock, it's extremely fun. You, especially Bottom Tree Warlock, you just start moving at the speed of sound, and they can't really catch up to you or stop you. Uh, but that that's also great, and especially. Uh, I've enjoyed the the hunter change for top tree art because I I've been playing all three classes this week and even though for hunters they only extended the duration of uh, deadly hit it's still a nice quality of life change that's like you know they care a bit more this uh, obviously there's more stuff to test but this is honestly a step in the right direction and when we get to it later on in void 3.0 like the start of Void 3.0, you'll see like where they, because I'm also interested in where what they want to specifically do with it. I have a general gist, but again, I only skimmed through this the first time, so let's just keep going. All right, so Combat Reforged. Today you're going to get a read to a quick tease on a feature we're calling Void 3.0, a new interpretation of the Void subclass and fantasies. In the coming weeks, you'll hear about changes we're making to how players regenerate ability energy and those, and how those changes are going to affect PvE and PvP with our 30th anniversary release. So, I'm assuming, right, that Void 3.0 is coming out with the 30th anniversary, which is going to be in December. So we still have like four months before we actually get we get to play with the stuff. So a lot of this is just, you know, this is what we're looking to do, all that. All right, cool. Uh, a few examples of the change in the pipe, a reduction to how many one-shot kill abilities are available in Crucible and Shifting, 
super energy regeneration so that players are rewarded for participating in combat versus waiting for a timer. Oh, that's that's nice. That's oh, I'm so I'm sitting here thinking of one shot kill abilities. So, man, because this is interesting, right? Because they that would mean that handheld supernova, the the nova warp melee ability might get changed for for 3.0 which honestly i love handheld supernova it's great but also maybe it should get changed because you gotta remember for before they nerfed handheld supernova in forsaken like forsaken meta for a very long time nova warp was was that was it it wasn't even for the super it was just for handheld because it did it just hurt a lot and then they nerfed it, and they they're bringing it. They're slowly bringing it back up to where it used to be, uh, which I personally think is a good idea. You know, there, as as the game shifts and changes, you gotta update stuff so things that you know were pretty strong back in the day might not be as strong now in a different environment, different meta, especially with these maps. These maps are trash, especially in PvP. <laughs> these maps are. Good garbage a lot of them are so why not bring back handheld supernova i'm with it uh okay Crispo, da, 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 da. later in year five we hope to share more information on an initiative the team is discussing internally right now making ammo regeneration a more deterministic and consistently paced experience across all activities oh okay so just yeah no i see i see what they're talking about it they're looking to work on ammo regen that seems consistent and like a reason for you wanting to have the uh, ammo regen in the game. Uh, I hope that we're describing uh, here paints a clear picture. The game is evolving for the better. Yeah, no, 100%. So I'm not going to read this. I, I don't care about this. But like I was just saying, the game is, is evolving to be a more modern game like we're not playing the same vanilla destiny 2 although there are some people that would like to we're not playing vanilla d2 anymore so you got to make changes for a more modern world modern game space and you know that that's a reason why subclasses or an entire subclass gets reworked so Let's get started. Void 3.0. A brave new world. As you saw in the reveal, we're going to be doing serious revamps to the existing light subclasses in Destiny 2. Our void solar and arc subclasses and damage types have been with Destiny from the very beginning. In fact, some player fantasies and mechanics in Destiny 2 today are the same that debuted in D1 back in 2014. And while we've had uh, refreshes in 2017 and 2018, Destiny 2 Forsaken, these subclasses, in some cases, have been left behind by the new power bar and building build crafting goals of the game. To help solve the problem, we're going to take these subclasses back to the shop, re retrofit, remix, and reinterpret the gameplay fantasies and mechanics by integrating them into a modern subclass experience. See, that, that's that's exactly what I what I just said, which is great. Again, mod. It is 2021 now. These, Some of these subclasses are four years old and still have the problems of uh, that they've had since launch. Cough, cough. Top tree. Uh, top tree Nova Bomb. Gets caught on literally everything. Uh, in Destiny 2 Beyond Light, we introduced a new subclass system we dubbed internally as Subclass 3.0. The goal of Subclass 3.0 were to create an experience that gave players more customization akin to Destiny 1, while also meaningfully involving that experience to us destiny is best when build crafting best in class action and power fantasy all meet to create gameplay experience you can't get anywhere else it's a bold promise that's a bold promise but i'm with it starting out into the void with void 3.0 we're taking the subclass you know and love and remixing them that means adding new abilities and mechanics ditching some old ones where it makes sense to do so and spreading out existing ones to create enticing new combinations uh, our hope is to retain play styles that you know and love today and to create some exciting new ones you didn't even know you wanted we can't wait to see what you all think 
about these changes and as always we're going to be looking for and responding to feedback part with that being done I'm going to bow out and let the team do the talking cool perfect so the a new shape all right cool this, this is what this is exactly what, what we need to uh, see so to paint a new picture of how we're approaching void 3.0 rework here's our main goals preserve the strong existing power fantasies of void we want to focus on what makes the damage type fun to use and give it a cohesive identity that can be felt throughout the subclass while also adding sweet new toys that feel like a natural extension of your void powers that's what I like to hear as a void main on uh, on warlock that that's what I like to hear uh, I'm, I'm both terrible I'll be honest with you uh, just from again just from reading so far I'm both excited and terrified because I don't know exactly where it's gonna go and hopefully it, it's they're promising that it'll, it'll go for the better and usually they they've been good on their promises especially recently so we shall see I just want to put that out there uh, provided Provide new and exciting build crafting possibilities throughout, through the combination of aspects and fragments. We want you to not only be able to craft similar playstyles to the old subclass diamonds using the new system, but also explore a bunch of new ways that your void abilities can work together with your armor and weapons. Set up a framework for systematic integration of the damage type into the rest of the game. We believe that Stasis is was very successful in providing a set shared combat behavior or verbs that can interact with each other and with other elements in the game. With Void, we want to double down on this effort and reorganize the subclass in a similar way. We're planning to continue this with Solar and Arc going forward. Hmm. So, we're guaranteed to get Solar and Arc 3.0. Man, can you imagine uh, having... <laughs> Can you imagine having Well of Radiance, right? But your melee is the ranged melee from Chop Tree uh, Solar right now? Because that that seems kind of fun. That seems freaking hilarious. Cause think about this, right? Having rebuilding the whole system, right? You're updating Void Arc and Solar so that you know you have more customization obviously but that that uh increases the viabilities of some of the seasonal mods from the artifact like the range stun on on solar uh as someone that doesn't really enjoy using top tree solar that much i only use it for for pvp sometimes and even there then it's a stretch for me but having the ability to play well of radiance in pvp P PVE activities and still be like okay that champion needs to get stunned from across the map let me just use my ranged pocket rocket stun him and then still be able to provide healing and yeah healing and defense for my team and have my abilities get refreshed even faster like that that is that is just cool that is amazing I'm down I'm with it let's let's keep going say the key whoop hello Say the key word. That was weird. <laughs> uh, with Void 3.0 update, we're defining a set core of keywords that will be used by various perks and abilities with each Void subclass, akin to stasis, slow, freeze, and shatter verbs used by stasis. Each subclass will specialize in a few of these verbs, but it will be possible to dabble in the rest by coordinating with your fire team or with certain combinations of ability and fragments. Now that's terrifying. Additionally, these birds will appear in other places outside of the subclass screen, per, uh, weapon perks, exotic armor, and mods from your seasonal artifact. We and we intend to continue expanding the list as we move forward. We believe that these systematic interactions between your abilities and your gear are core of Destiny's building crafting. And of course, we got a. Uh, I don't. Hmm. I actually don't know what most of these symbols are going to be. So. Alright, with Void, the three negative statuses that you'll be applying to enemies are Suppression. I'm assuming this, the, uh, the Void, the Void symbol is going to be Suppression. Uh, Weaken, uh, Suppression, the target is knocked out of any active abilities. It can't activate any abilities, movement moves, movement modes, as long as 
Suppression persists. Afflicts enemy AI combatants can't shoot their weapon. Weaken the target. Uh, the oh, hold on. The target takes increased damage and has their movement speed slow. Enemy AI fire their weapons with decreased accuracy. Volatile target is afflicted by unstable void energy and will explode upon taking damage or on death. So, cause I, hmm. Cause here's what I'm thinking, right? If they rework Void 3.0, well, they are reworking Void 3.0. I'm wondering if they're gonna rework Felwinter's Helm, because Felwinter's Helm applies both suppression and weaken on enemies. It and the effect gets strengthened depending on the enemy that you uh, ability ability melee final blow or finisher final blow. So, hmm, that that's something that I just realize with just reading this we'll see because if if you can build around uh fell winters the fell winter suppression slash weaken buff on warlock and just abuse it even more than you can already the fell winters is probably top three exotics on warlock like you might you because on paper just have having the ability at any point in time to get a finisher and then debuffing the entire crowd of enemies and do increased damage and give some breathing room for absolutely no reason yeah no nah, it's pretty strong so we shall see and the three positive effects that you will apl uh, be applying to yourself and allies is void overshield that's on titan a protective shield uh protective barrier void light which reduces damage taken from combatants invincibility you vanish from sight and do not appear on the enemy radar and devour you feast on the energy of your foes kills restore you to full health, grant grenade energy, and extend devour. These verbs should be familiar to veteran players, but now exist in new, broader, systematic framework that will allow us to consistently spread the behaviors across the game, where previously they mostly existed in their own siloed of subclasses. Oh yeah, and then I know exactly what the part this is. So we'll we'll get to it because they they definitely do mention it. And it's, it's something I definitely want to talk about. So, to, to close this section out, uh, here's a preview of some of the new and updated abilities that you'll be able to play with once Void 3.0 drops. Uh, Night Stalker, Hunter, Shadow Shot, Mobius Quadriver, which is Bottom Tree, fire two volleys of three Void Arrows in a cone which seek out enemies and spawn Void Anchors on impact. Shadow Shot makes tethered enemies volatile and deals increased damage to tethered targets. Cool. One of the main use, uh, usability points of the current iteration of Moby's Quiver is having to press the super button input a bunch of times with each arrow uh, individually, which is cumbersome and takes a lot of time and often results in players drifting away that they didn't intend to be, drifting somewhere they didn't intend to be, off the side of a cliff as a totally hypothetical example. By firing multiple arrows at once, it should be able to a lot easier to blanket an area with traps in preparation for a fight or burst down on or burst damage on a boss. So let's see. Two volleys of three arrows. So that's six arrows in a cone. I'm assuming like you jump up in the air, uh shoot once, three arrows land, cause it, it says tracking. Tether enemies that uh, spawn void air arrow that seek out enemies and spawn void anchors on impact. So you just jump in, shoot three, then you still have time in your super and you shoot the other three. All right, cool. Uh, easy. So yeah, no, you know, Void on on Void Hunter definitely Mobius Quiver is the weakest. It's it's not really useful because just top tree tether is just stronger. Invis is stronger, and then middle tree Void is the most used for PvP because you can go Invis and you get damage mitigation. It's it's crazy. So, Stylus Executioner from Middle Tree, and then this is what uh, they're reworking it to be on a, on a broader scale. So, defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile enemy grants invisibility and true sight. After performing a Stylus Execution, your next melee attack, while invisible, weakens the enemy. A twist on Middle Tree Night Stalker's current Flawless Execution. Uh, this aspect lets the Hunter specialize in defeating debuffed enemies to keep looping their invisibility. That's pretty cool. That, 
it's definitely interesting. I don't know if this is going to be used as much. Again, I would have to, when it comes out, we just have to see. But it's definitely a, a good change in the right direction. It's just making things a lot more broader. Because you never know what, what will click for you as a player. So if you want to use Stylus Executioner, let's go do it. Uh, so Sentinel Titan, Overwatch, Aspect. So uh, cast a Void Empowered Barricade to grant an overshield to yourself and nearby allies. The Empowered Barricade slowly regenerates the Void Overshield of allies bunkering behind it. You want players to be able to lean into the Sentinel fantasy of being able to frontline protector for your team. So Overwatch is a powerful tool for setting up prior to an encounter and providing a safe haven to fall back to when things get spicy. See, <laughs> now... If if Overwatch applies to to just barricade and not the full wall bar uh, barricade, that's gonna be insane. Cause I can I can just imagine how Overwatch in just in Crucible, like you you set up you uh, get to an area first, you lock it down, hit the barricade button, and then you and your th your two other teammates get an overshield and then anybody that comes around the corner is like hey yo nani tf and it's like nah we don't want the smoke because you the three of you have overshields and if one of you get low you can just back up into the barricade and just like yup mm -hmm. healing well not healing uh regen overshield so we got the tank toss projectile melee as they should uh hurry shield towards an enemy the shield can ricochet off enemy and services grant you a chunk of void overshield each enemy man that sounds super toxic <laughs> That sounds extremely toxic because it's going to have a, a crazy amount of tracking on it. I can already tell. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you get an overshield for every enemy it hits. We want to give Titans more options when it comes to projectile melee. Shield toss is a great choice for aggressively pushing towards in, <laughs> aggressively pushing forward into groups of enemies, softening them up, and giving you extra staying power. Yup, that... Man, that sounds toxic. Anyway. So... We got a uh, Voidwalker Warlock, Pocket Singularity. Another, oh yeah, no, this is the one that we saw in the in the Witch Queen trailer, uh, which is like the it's kind of like the ball that uh similar to Arc Middle Tree Arc has, but mm. all right. So po Pocket Singularity, Voidwalker Warlock, Projectile Melee, launch a tracking unstable ball of void energy that detonates. When it nears an enemy, pushing targets away from the blast and making them vo volatile. Oh, wait, nah, dude, you, you just can't do that. What? Uh, designed as an anti-dive tool and a way to push enemies out of cover. With careful placement, it's possible and incredibly satisfying to boop enemies up into the air and pop their vol pop their volatile. Oh, because volatile is, is the effect, yeah. No, pop their volatile with a well-placed headshot before they hit the ground. That does sound fun. That does sound fun. Man, being a warlock is so cool. Ah, ah, I love being warlocks. Uh, Child of Old Gods Aspect. Cast your rift to summon an, a sentinel black hole which cover, which hovers at your side, waiting for a target. It will launch itself at enemies and begin to siphon their energy and weaken them, refunding their life force back to you as either grenade or and melee energy if you're using healing rift, or health if you're using empowering rift. Defeating enemies who been siphoned by the child will refund some rift energy child of the old gods is a strong debuff tool that gives void walkers an additional way to lock down an area while sustaining themselves see now this 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 is cool honestly like this is something that that is interesting because it's different it's different enough from devour and this is one of the one of the points that I wanted to to bring up because they add an aspect of like Child of the Old Gods. In theory, it could be their Devour replacement, because as of right now, Devour is fairly strong considering that you get all of your HP back after every kill and after every kill that you get while restoring your HP. It also restores your grenade energy, which you can use to devour more. Just in case, so you have infinite health as long as you're killing things in a timely manner, right? And then your super also gives you devour, which you didn't before, but they just changed that last year. Anyway, so it, it's it's definitely interesting enough because this 
again, you you have to choose between whether or not you're going to use Healing Rift to get abilities back, or if you're going to use Empowering Rift, because Empowering Rift will give you just straight up damage, and it will heal you, but none of your other abilities will regen. So, a lot of a lot of the choices, especially with you know modern games, which should be a rule, is you want there to be options for for your players, which is what I've always been saying, especially for Middle Tree, Void Walker, Nova Warp. Since the since them nerfing it uh, previously, this is pre this is pre three point three point oh patch by the way. Since them nerfing it, one of my biggest gripes with uh, with the subclass, other than it being extremely weak, is that you know there's not really many options with it. It Fiddle Tree Void Walker was like it was a combination of trying to be Devour slash trying to be uh, Top Tree Nova Bomb. So, because you would get healing back on, on ability kills, you you can charge up your grenade to do increased damage, and you, you just kind of like run around and just blow people up, which was part of the aspect of it. So you had your own self bloom, but it wouldn't bloom other things that blew up with it. So this is definitely, this is 100% definitely a good rework to the class again adding adding more options adding more aspects and a new projectile melee for for void is pretty fun too and of course it is confirmed that nova warp isn't going anywhere the super itself it's just getting a lot more i don't know love <laughs> it's definitely a lot more love so we hope that this preview sparks your curiosity it gets you thinking about new void bills have you ever won oh also for, for Warlock, again, uh, as a Warlock main, I can speak about this a lot. With these new changes, it'll probably boost up the usability of Nezirak Sin. Because Nezirak Sin is good as it is now, but there's definitely better exotics that you can uh, run. But Nezirak Sin with po Pocket Singularity is probably hilarious. And so is Nezirak Sin with Child of the Gods is probably pretty hilarious as well. So, we, we shall see. We hope that this preview sparks your curiosity and gets you thinking about cool new void builds. Oh, look. Even the... Uh, shield toss with the... Pal not palin Is it palindrome? The Titan exotic? Uh, hold on. Well, well, what am I asking for? We can just look it up right now. Because I have one in my vault. Do -do 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 -do. Come on. Load up, baby. There we go. Uh... Alright, cool. So yeah, you got Doomfang, Paladrin, so Void Melee Kills give super energy, while on Sentinel Shield active, Melee Kills recharge Throwing Shield, which extends on your super on hits. So yeah, you're gonna be running around like, oh yeah, let's go ads, ah, I have my new projectile melee, that's a Throwing Shield, and then you just bonk three or four of them, you get like, I don't know, 30% of your super off one bonk. And then you say, oh, word, say less, and you pull out your Monte Carlo, and then the first time you bonk them, you get, you get max macro off chain, you start mowing through stuff, and then before you know, you have your next shield. And then you know what you do? You loop the cycle, and in less than three seconds, you have your super. So, that, <laughs> fun. They, they're right. They, they weren't lying. They, I immediately started, started thinking about the all kinds of possibilities which is excellent very very cool so that's pretty much it for uh for me going through void 3.0 you know let me know what you think about the changes to void 3.0 like do you do you like them do you think they should not change them you know let me know what do you what what do you think are going to be possible builds that you can see for yourself running just from you know what they previewed because i'm definitely gonna mess around with this pocket singularity because this this just sounds hilarious just all the time because it's is most likely a better version of nova warp melee because you, you just pop them and they just explode everywhere <laughs> as a like, dude i'm so excited so again uh i'm guesstimating that void 3.0 will, will be released with the 30th anniversary which is in december so we shall see 
with that being said i'm gonna see myself out of there if you enjoyed the video definitely hit the like button uh hit the subscribe button more content for you every i'm doing a challenge where there's a video up every week for the entire season so yeah no we we are out here grinding forever so with that being said i'm gonna get out of here bye